In this video, I'm going to give you two solutions to address the small battery size issue on this JCON Retrovolt electric bike. Now, the stock battery is a 48 volt, 13 amp hour battery, provides 18 to 20 miles of range. That's full throttle, no pedaling, and the highest speed. Now, the first solution is to replace the 13 amp hour battery with a 20 amp hour battery. A link to that battery is below, but it costs about $350 to $400. It'll provide you about 30 miles of range. One negative of going to the 20 amp hour battery is you'll need a new mount that comes with the battery, but you'll probably no longer be able to hide the controller inside the mount. So you'll need to place the controller somewhere else on the frame. Now the second more economical solution is to add a second battery like I've done here. All these connections are plug and play. It costs about $250. This is the 10 amp hour battery mated to the factory one. So it gives me 23 amp hours of range. That's 30 to 35 miles of range in the highest pedal assisting mode. Now there is an option for a 15 amp hour larger battery, which will even give you close to 40 miles of range throttle only. You can put the battery stored here on the frame. You could also store it underneath that cargo area in the back. All the connections are plug and play. There's no cutting or splicing of wires. I'll show you step by step on how to do that. Now there's not a lot of room in this frame to add another hard shell battery. I mean, you might be able to mount one in the cargo rack area, but it'll look kind of goofy sitting off on the end. If you have another creative solutions, please leave in the comments. I'd really like to hear from you. So before we get started on this install, I hope you like and subscribe. Here are all the components and connectors that you're gonna to need to add the extra battery. All these connections are plug and play. There's no splicing wires. This is the extra battery. It comes with its own charge port and charger. So you can charge this along with the factory battery. At the same time, you'll have this battery combiner. This is a 30 amp battery combiner. These two cables to connect to the factory connections. You'll need an extension cable or this on off switch. The on off switch is optional, but I like to have this so that I can toggle over to the extra battery when I get the factory battery down to about one or two bars. That way I know it can ride home and I have enough battery. You'll need a small amount of electrical tape and a few zip ties so that you can secure the cables to the frame. So without further ado, let's get started on this install. The first thing you want to do is remove the factory battery. There is a key lock if you need to, pops out like that. And the controller is located in the battery mount here. So you're gonna need a good Phillips head screwdriver to remove those screws. With the cover removed, now you can see the specs on the controller. The max current is 21 amps. I have the controller box open here. This is the controller. I have these red and black wires. These are the power wires coming from the factory battery into the controller. So I wanna take these connectors and separate them. And you can see here, this is the controller end and this is to the factory battery. This is the battery combiner. Typically I see XD60 connectors in here and then everything is plug and play. That's why I have these adapter cables. So if you look at the battery combiner, these two connections go to the batteries and this one goes to the controller. It's really foolproof so you can't screw up the connections. But if I take this one that goes to the controller, plug it in, you're going to see I have two male connectors on here. So if I go to the controller, the negative or the black wire plugs in, but the red wire is male to male. So Let's see what I can do here. So I have this other connector. There's a female that'll plug in to the battery combiner. And then I can come up to the factory battery. The black or negative connects, but the red is female to female. So in order to get this straightened out, I need to switch the type of wires or connectors on these wires. They don't sell one like this. So what I'm going to do is just cut these and then swap the connectors on each end. That would be the easiest. And then everything is plug and play. All right, I have the wires here stripped. I'm going to go ahead and take this butt connector, slide it into one end, and then I'm going to use the crimping tool. Crimp that. So you see it's tight. Then I'm going to come over here and crimp the other end. 
of this connection like that. Crimp that. Could put some weatherproofing on this if I want to and then heat shrink it. But let me just do this for quickness. Now I have this male end. Go ahead and put that on there. Then I'm coming in here, crimping that. Make sure it's nice and tight. Do that to the other end. Put that in there. All right. So now I can take this, plug it into the factory like that. That's the factory battery. Now I can come over here and plug this into the controller. And everything is the factory connector, can be easily reversed. Now this is a little bit loose. It seems like it could unplug. So I'm going to put some electrical tape on these male connections. But these other ones are pretty nice and tight. It has this expansion. So everything looks good. It's connected. And then the extra battery will have this switch. So that will plug right in like this. And then I'll have this switch so I could turn the extra battery on and off nice and easy. Before I tidy up all this cabling, I'm going to test the extra battery and this on off switch. I'm going to make sure the on off switch is in the off position. I'm going to go ahead and connect the extra battery and test it with the bike here. Go ahead and connect it there. Got this extra battery. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. Sometimes it sparks a little bit. And now if I turn this on, you can see that the screen is on. Everything is running off the extra battery. Let's see what the speed is. Pedal assist mode 5 gets to 34 miles an hour, which is what the factory battery gets to when there's no load on it. Obviously, when there's a load in a passenger, it's about 29 to 30 miles per hour. Now, if I shut this switch off, the screen should turn off because now it would be running on the factory battery which is not installed so i have everything wired up i'm going to go ahead and clean up all this cabling i'm going to use the electrical tape to seal off these connections This is where the zip ties will come in handy as I route the cables out of the bottom of the box. There's a little access cut out here in the bottom of the box. So I'm going to go ahead, tuck those cables in there. This is what actually probably takes the longest is getting all the cables packaged here in the frame nice and neatly. Now I'm going to go ahead and install the cover. All right, I have the cables out here. This is the battery combiner. Where do you want to hide this? You can zip tie it right to this support here you could add extension cables and run it up and hide it underneath the seat you could also zip tie it here there's many different places you can put it but what i'm going to do is test fit this battery in here it fits great and where i want to put the battery the extra battery is right in here It'll be easy to install and remove. I'm just going to use these Velcro straps. I'm going to tuck the charge cable inside so you don't see that. Zip this around. Here is the cable to connect the battery. Get 
that aligned. Then you have this cable. I'm going to route the cable down this side. Actually, what I want to do is route it through here like that. I think I want to route it down here. Keep all this hidden like that. Maybe put the switch here so that I can turn this on and off while I'm riding on the fly. And then let's go ahead and connect everything. I think I'm just going to try it here. Make sure everything works before I tidy it up. So once again, this is foolproof. So this one goes to the controller. Then any which one can go to the battery. This is the extra battery. And this is the factory battery. Make sure that that's off. Okay. And then like I said, I'll get this cable management under control. Zip tie it like that. Now that we have both batteries installed, let's test them. We'll test first the factory battery, then the extra battery, then both of them combined. So I'm going to turn on the factory battery. Then I'm going to turn on the screen. You can see that. Now the top speed with no load should be 34 miles per hour, which it gets to that. Okay, if I turn off the factory battery, the screen should go black. Now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to turn on the extra battery. And now I'm going to turn on the screen. You're going to see the screen turns on and gets to 35 miles per hour with no load. And now I'm going to test it with both batteries. You have both batteries on. And it gets to 35 miles per hour. So this setup is good. I'm going to take this out for a ride in the morning. I have everything wired up and I took the bike out for a cruise. You can see here how the cables are routed. The on-off switch is easy to access while riding. Then it comes down here to the battery combiner. I need to clean up this cable management here. But overall, it's riding great. I'm about 22 miles into a ride. I got two bars left, so I'd estimate the range is about 35 miles with this setup. That's the 10 amp hour battery with the factory 13 amp hour battery. If I go to the 15 amp hour, I should be able to get close to 40 miles of range. So I hope that you like this video. Subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, please leave in the comments and thanks for watching.